Hamilton. Welcome to another Sunday Home Connections. I'm so excited because it's a new month and it's a new theme and most importantly, it's the start of summertime. I've even seen that some of you are already going to the pool or getting wet in your own pool, doing water slides, water fights. Oh yeah, how fun. Now I realize that you have a couple more weeks of school left, so hang in there. You can do it. Finish well. Guess what? We're talking all month long about faith. And that is right, my friends. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. I had to take a moment to see what our life app was. It's all about getting focused and taking a closer look. Kind of like this microscope, right? It has the ability to help us see what we can't see. For example, my hair. Yes, that's right. My hair, see, can you see it? Right, it's really thin. It's straight. Right, and there's not a whole lot that I can see, but if I place it up under the microscope and I take a closer look, I can see all kinds of things. Or how about grass? I have a couple of blades of grass here, right? The eye can only see that it's green and a little bit of the texture, but if I place it under the microscope, I can really see details and things that the naked eye cannot see. Well, that's how faith is. It's trusting God and believing that although we can't see him, we know that he's here because we can see the things that he's made. Check out this Bible story with me today. It's going to be great. But first of all, you know what to do. Press pause. Run and grab your Bibles, meet me right back here, and we're going to get our worship on. And also, we'll see about last week's weekly challenge. See you in a bit. What do you believe in? You believe I can catch a ball because you just saw me do it. You believe your dog is shedding his winter coat because you can see all the fur that your dad makes you clean up. You believe the floor is solid because you haven't fallen through it yet. Some people say seeing is believing, but faith says use what you can see to believe in what you can't see. You can't see the wind, but on those wild, stormy evenings, you can see what it does. You can't see what's happening inside your stomach without an x-ray machine, but you believe that this can be fixed by this. You can't see your parents' love, but you can see the way your mom cuts your sandwich just the way you like it, and how dad drives you to soccer four times a week. And no, you can't see God with your physical eyes, but you can see him in everything he's created. You can see his love in the kid who's kind to you on the bus and the drive through lady who smiles and gives you extra fries. Most of all, you can see who God is in Jesus and the eyewitness accounts written down by his best friend. What do you believe in? You believe I can catch a ball because you just saw me do it. You believe your dog is shedding his winter coat because you can see all the fur that your dad makes you clean up. You believe the floor is solid because you haven't fallen through it yet. Some people say seeing is believing, but faith says use what you can see to believe in what you can't see. You can't see the wind, but on those wild stormy evenings, you can see what it does. You can't see what's happening inside your stomach without an x-ray machine, but you believe that this 
can be fixed by this. You can't see your parents' love, but you can see the way your mom cuts your sandwich just the way you like it. And how dad drives you to soccer four times a week. And no, you can't see God with your physical eyes, but you can see him in everything he's created. You can see his love in the kid who's kind to you on the bus and the drive through lady who smiles and gives you extra fries. Most of all, you can see who God is in Jesus and the eyewitness accounts written down by his best friends. When you trust, even when it's hard to see, when you live a life based on faith in who God is and how he tells us to love, others can see God at work in you. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life, because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking John, good. You're here. And we're starting in two minutes. Oh, uh, okay. You, you haven't seen my glasses? No, have you? but you look great. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> hey, John. Script looks good today. Uh, really? I, I haven't read the script. Hey, you haven't seen my glasses, have you? No, I haven't. Where was the last place you looked for them? Well, I was sitting right here, 
and getting ready for the show when I saw a little white rabbit run across the set. So I followed him down a hole where I got really small, then really tall, and there was a cat, a queen, and a caterpillar. And the next thing I know, I'm coming through the door and I don't have my glasses. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to let you look for them a little longer, but uh, your day's been weird enough already. Uh, your glasses are on your head. What? Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, 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 all right. Yes, let's get this show on the road. Uh, John, are you feeling okay? Yeah, great. Now that I found my glasses. Why? No reason. Why is everybody looking at me like that? Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. Hello. And we are glad you're hanging out with us today. Yep. Hey, what is with the glasses? Whoa. whoa. Turn out my new toy that came in a cereal box. You're telling me those binoculars came in this box? No. Yeah. No, but they're really? not binoculars. They're micro goggles. Ooh, what's a micro goggles? Yeah, they're, they're kind of like hands free microscopes. They help you focus in on tiny things so you can see them closer. Oh, yeah, okay. There's apparently a secret message on the back of this that I need to use these to find out what it says. Oh, really? Cool. What's the secret message say? Mm, eat more cereal. Huh. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. Don't mind if I take a look? No. I guess it's kind of a subliminal marketing thing, huh? I don't think it's subliminal. Wow, man! Yeah. What are these things? These things are useless. What? I'm sending them back. No, you don't have to send them back. Wait. wait. We could use them to play a game. Oh, great! It's time to play Random Magnified Things. Hey! Random Magnified Things. Okay, uh, this screen is about to show us random things as seen through your micro goggles. Okay. So, each image is magnified 100 times its normal viewing size. All we have to do is figure out what each thing is. Whoever gets the most right wins. Got it? Of course. Great, you go first. All right, hit me small. Hmm, that looks like, huh. uh, let's see, 100 times. I'm gonna go with like, it looks like a, it looks like a trombone, but that's too big, right? I don't That'd know. That'd be their actual size. Like this is how big a trombone normally is. It looks is. like a bridge to I, me. Yeah, I I'm gonna go with a, a thumbtack. Thumbtack? Yeah, the curvature of the thumbtack. All right, sure. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, let's see if you're right. Uh, oh. You were in the right, right arena. Yeah, office supplies. That's right. Okay, my turn. Show me tiny. Um, okay. I, I think I know what this is. I would guess it was like a like a close-up of like a grasshopper or something like yeah, that. But yeah. But there's a little red here. Mm hmm a little red and a little green. I'm gonna guess a strawberry. Ooh, strawberry it is. Brandon guessed a strawberry. What is it? Uh, oh, oh, tomato. Darn it. Oh, that's right. All right, all right. Back to me. Macro machines go. Mmm. Oh, what in the world? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. You know? I know what this is. At first, I thought it was a lemon. Okay. But it's not. I know what it is. Because we're magnified. That's yeah. that is a pencil. That's what I think too. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, did he get it? Pencil! Yeah, you're right, that was very good. That's very right, good. Me all again. Right. It's teeny time. All right. Hoo oh man, that's uh, I know what that is. I think I know what it is. It looks like my favorite uh, dessert. Is that an Oreo? It's an Oreo! Oh, I was right. Yes, you were. Mm, okay. I want okay. some milk. Yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's my turn now, all right? Micro machines go. All right. All right. Oh, what, Ooh, what that is that? Is? I don't know. It could be celery. Maybe like fiber opti optic cable. It or... does look like that. But it's bunched up like. Oh, oh, what no, are you no, gonna no. Go it's, with? it's a, it's a, it's a toothbrush. Is it a toothbrush? You oh! betcha! Oh, well well Okay, I got right, another your turn, one. Your turn. Uh, minutia, hit me. <laughs> oh man. Oh, is that ooh. more fruit? It I don't know. Like... It looks like cracks in something. Oh, that is interesting. Like, a, oh my goodness. I uh. Almost looks like a nose. It does. <laughs> Man, that is really hard. I'm going to say it's a uh, it's a, it's a bowling ball. I don't know. I got a nothing. bowling ball. Yeah, so I can't. Okay, I don't know is it, it a bowling ball? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, it's a bottle cap. Oh, I see. Great. great. Wow. I don't think we can afford that damage. No, but I don't think so either. <laughs> hey, okay, let's move okay, quickly. Uh, there's one more. <laughs> this round is worth a million points. 
Is it? Why did we bother with all the other rounds? We're both playing on this one, so the okay. first person to correctly identify the image wins. Are you ready? Yeah, you're killing me, Smalls. All right, go ahead and hit. Mm, uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, fool's uh, gold. No, 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 uh, no, no. It's it, cornbread. Cornbread. Corn, corn, no, it's the uh, it's uh, the inside of an orange. It's, no, I know it's I'm not. not very good with shush. color. Okay. Why it's, shush? Because I don't want you to win. It's, okay. it's a rock candy. Rock it's, candy. That's good. It's it's the inside of a a, a bee. Honey, a honeycomb? hive, honeycomb. Um, it's a sponge. It's a sponge. It's a. It's not a sponge. Uh, oh. This is going to take forever. Uh, is it? Is it the, the cereal honeycomb? Ooh. No. Is it a cereal? Uh, cereal. Ce it is cereal. It is. It's frosted flakes. I don't know who won. got that one. I, don't know. I said cereal. You, you know said what? a cereal. We'll do five hundred thousand each. Okay, great. Okay, so great. I win. Yeah. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's going on? Why do you have binoculars on your face? They're not binoculars. Don't ask. Do you have something for us? Well, I do. It's all about folks who believe in something they couldn't see. Sounds perfect. They're micro goggles. Take it away, Kellen. You bet. Now, we can't actually see God, not even with micro goggles. But we can see the stories of people in the past who put their faith in God. And I've got some special people to help me tell some of their stories. It's time for another edition of... Kids Factive! The writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us of a guy named Abraham. What up? I'm Abraham. Well... Actually, when God called Abraham, he was already pretty old. Oh. What up? I'm Abraham. Better. <laughs> Abraham and his wife, Sarah. I'm Sarah, with an H, in case you were wondering. Yeah, that's good to know. Even though they were old, they didn't have any kids. We ain't got no kids. But God told us to leave our home and go to a new land. He's promised us. Plus, he told us we would have kids, he promised. Look at us. We're old. We're like uh, cassette players or rotary phones. Didn't you hear what I said? I said he promised. Oh, then let's go. So they followed God and they had kids and grandkids and great grandkids. We got kids now. Yeah, we do. Yes, they did, just like God promised. God also promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed because of Abraham's family. Abraham would not be alive to see the whole world being blessed, but he had faith that God would keep his promise. And now, let's talk about one of Abraham's great, 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 great... Why not just say descendants? Yeah, that'd be easier. One of Abraham's descendants, Moses. Let my people go! Wait, before that, when Moses was a baby. <sighs> go, 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 go! He was rescued by his mother, who hid him in a basket on the banks of the Nile River. Whoa! Until he was found by Pharaoh's daughter. Aw, look at you, my sweet little... Mama! Baby? Yeah, so Moses was raised in the royal Egyptian family, even though he was actually an Israelite. The Israelites were slaves of the Egyptians. But one day, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and into a land flowing with milk and honey. They are my people. As much as I love milk and honey, I'm not sure I'm the right guy for the job. I will be with you. Oh! All right, then. Moses chose to stand with his own people, God's people, and he led them to freedom from slavery. Oh, you can do it now. Oh. <clears throat> Let my people go! Mwah, beautiful. Thank you. The Israelites were free from slavery. And even though Moses didn't live to see the land flowing with milk and honey that God promised his people, 
Moses still had faith that God would keep his promise. Then there was David, who was anointed to be king of Israel. That's right, I'm anointed. What does anointed mean? It means you're not king yet. I'm still the king. So give me that crown. Oh, okay, here you go, King Saul. Thank you. <laughs> you're not getting this back. I'm going to be the king, and then my son will be king, and then my son's son will be king, and then my son's son's son will be king, and then... Um, sorry, King Saul. God promised David he would be the next king. He, he promised? Ah, uh, man. Uh. Thank you. David was the next king of Israel like God promised. And God promised that David's family would always have a king on the throne. And even though King David would not live to see the birth of his descendant, who would rule God's people forever, David had faith that God would keep his promise. These people, they lived thousands of years ago, and they didn't always see what God promised them. But God could see things they couldn't see. And guess what? We can see things they couldn't see. We know the whole world was blessed through Abraham's family because one of Abraham's descendants was Jesus. We know that the Israelites made it into the land flowing with milk and honey. Yes! Uh, I mean, <clears throat> praise God. And we know Jesus is also a descendant of King David. And even though we can't see forever, we can have faith that Jesus will always rule like a king because that's what God promised. The, the end. end. That was great, kids. Thank you so much for your help. That is so cool, Kellen. You don't actually have to see something to believe in it. That's right, which means you don't have to wear these anymore. Oh yeah. True. We can have faith in God just by reading about people from the past. Or there are even things we can see today that can help us believe in God. Such as? Well, maybe you can see God in things he's created. Or you can see how God works in the lives of people around you. That's true. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. I'll catch you guys next time. Okay, and I'll see you then. Okay. You know, I believe in things I can't see all the time. You do? Yeah, like air. Can't see it, believe in it though. Oh. What? Nothing, I just, I don't know, I expected you to say something like leprechauns. Why would I say something like that? No reason. Do, do, do you know something I don't know, Brandon? Wait, are leprechauns, are leprechauns real? Are leprechauns real? Reveal the question. What are things you believe that you can't see? You got anything? I don't know, maybe, maybe leprechauns. Okay, what about you? What are things you believe that you can't see? Is it germs, uh, radio waves, or something else? Uh, talk about it together. Yeah, I gotta find one, because they'll lead me to their pot of marshmallows or whatever. I, there are no such thing as leprechauns. Yeah, yeah, what is I it, what is it? There, there's blue diamonds, orange stars, green clovers, purple hot shows. Okay, that was the so-and-so show, folks. Goodbye. Wow, it's amazing how different things look under a microscope versus looking at them with the naked eye. You know, it reminds me of Hebrews chapter 11. Even though we can't see Jesus in person, we can see how he has worked in the lives of others who have come before us. And that's why it's so important to read his book, my friends. And speaking of the word of God, Great job in memorizing last month's memory verse. You all were awesome, and it was so cool to see all of the videos coming in. So, as promised, I better go change my clothes because I think I'm about to get slimed. Let us not come tired. It's doing good. The right time. We will gather a crop if we d d don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. Hey there, Pastor Jesse. How are you feeling about getting slimed today? Let's do this! A hundred kids memorized all their Bible verses. Let's go! Oh, my word. Let us not become tired. Doing good. Great time we will harvest a crop. If you don't give up, we'll keep some slime.
Hey there, Pastor Tim. How do you feel about getting slimed today? Well, it's not my favorite thing, and I talked a little bit of smack to the kids, and uh, they got me, so here we go. Oh yeah, they don't like smack talk, that's for sure. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time. If we don't give up, Galatians 6, 9. Pastor Lynn, how are you feeling about getting slimed today? Ugh, I couldn't sleep all night, and I've been dreading it, so dreading it. I can't believe you kids. I thought you loved me. I thought I was your favorite. Let us not become tired of doing good. The light time we will gather a cop if we don't give up. Great job, my friends, in sliming your pastors. You were determined to learn that memory verse. And it looks like I'm going to need some determination in getting all of this green slime out of my hair. That about wraps up another Sunday Home Connections. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you next time.